We're back here again to experience the thrill of another week of My Hero Academia spoilers. So sit tight right there, and we're gonna discuss everything going on in My Hero Academia chapter 381. And if you need something to watch after this video, please check out my My Hero Academia Iceberg Explained series. We're currently, we're two layers deep going over everything interesting that's ever happened in the My Hero Academia fandom and interesting lore having to do with the series that you might not know about. But speaking of things you might not know about, the title of this chapter is Darkness. And and that's for a very, very good reason, because we're actually about to see one of my favorite characters in the entire series finally showing his full potential. But more on that in a second. As we pick back up at Gunga Mountain Villa following the battle with All For One and everyone there, and the chapter begins with Kami confused by the fact that All For One has a face now, and Shishikura saying that he will get revenge for his father against All For One. And that's because, reminder, if you didn't know, Shishikura's dad actually was one of the guards who worked at Tartarus, and if anything, I believe it's the guard that All For One literally carries out, and we do see a little bit of his dialogue here. So Shishikura definitely has a lot of reasons to want to go after All For One and turn him into his own personal meatball, but he says that although his desire was to kill All For One, he is not going to give in to hate right now. He's going to inherit his father's efforts as a jailer and put All For One away once and for all. But it's too bad for Shishikura, I know he doesn't understand this right now, but All For One is completely being erased right now thanks to Aerith rewind, so it's very not likely for him to end up in a prison cell ever again, although this is a very, very understandable motivation for the character. And on the page, we see the three Shiketsu students united facing All For One, and large gusts of air start making their way towards All For One, with little meatball bullets kind of riding the air currents as they try to hit All For One as small projectiles to try to keep him busy. And I'm sure in that horde of meatballs, you also probably have a bunch of illusory ones, thanks to Kami's ability. Now on the next page, we see a lot of other Shiketsu students arrive and start helping the heroes on the ground to deal with the Twice clones. And at the same time, Pixie Bob notices Tokoyami, who's still having that awesome reaction from the last chapter that became a meme, as he floats in the sky and tries to figure out what to do after seeing Kami's illusion. Pixie Bob says that the focus has shifted to immobilizing Toga and defeating All For One, saying that all the heroes of long range quirks should go and fight him. And on the page, we just get this really big shot of all the Twice clones pretty much just being thrown in a blender by all of Anasa's air currents and now the attacks from the large group of Shiketsu students. This is where we see that a lot of the debris is actually making its way up in the air towards All For One, and he actually catches one of the Twice clones that's up flying towards him, watching it fade away into mush in his hands, as he realizes that the heroes are really starting to put on a counterattack. But this is something that I definitely took note of, because I wonder if All For One could take Twice's clones from one of his clones, or if that's something that he could only do from the original. And something in this chapter lets us know that it's not likely that he can take the quirk from one of the clones, but it is something very interesting, because again, we do pretty much get a full page, focusing on All For One catching this Twice clone and Hawks' communication with Tsukauchi that we're gonna talk about in a second. Now Hawks contacts Tsukauchi and he thanks him for sending reinforcements, but Tsukauchi says that the Shiketsu students were already on their way before he even asked. He claims that the future of the war is tied to what will happen in Gunga, so they need to stop All For One ASAP. And it's here where All For One stops playing around and he actually starts to act. After the last chapter, I had some real questions about everything going on of All For One, because it's like, why are you struggling here? You know what I mean? You fought against Prime All Might. There's no real reason why you should be struggling against a lot of this riffraff, unless everyone really, really comes together and puts together an effort to take you down. I really don't understand how you could even struggle. But this chapter explains that really, it's just been that All For One has mostly been focused on running away. And in this chapter, he finally starts to actually fight back. All For One says that they were so cautious about the risk of him stealing the hero's quirks that initially they only sent Endeavor and Hawks to fight him. But now they're getting desperate and they've littered the battlefield with all sorts of interesting and amazing quirks for him to take and use against them. All For One starts laughing and uses an interesting quirk combination, growing wings and shooting out a giant kind of orb laser beam that has large black electrical currents flowing through it as the tips of the wings that come out of All For One's back, they're not really like feathers wings are more like kind of weird bone wings that come out of his shoulders. They all have small balls of light on the end of them, which funny enough kind of reminds me of the vibe that you get from Megumi's new, something that's being used right now in JJK. 
The attack tears through a lot of the heroes, hitting heroes like Kamui Woods, Kinoko, and Hawks, and Hawks realizes that All for One is starting to take things seriously. Shishido from Horikoshi's last manga says they cannot be intimidated and that the defending heroes need to contain these blows, because they finally got All for One to stop and fight instead of running, so the more that they can take and the more that they can keep him there and keep him fighting, the better chance Deku was going to have in the other battlefield, and the better chance they have of finding some sort of flaw in All for One so they can all take him down. And it's on this page where we do get a little bit of an update on the situation between Endeavor and Dobby, where we see that Dobby's face is just in the worst situation we've seen it in thus far, with his eyes really just being burning pits of hate, as he flies towards and chases Endeavor, who seems to be leading Toya away to another location for their final battle. Now back to All For One, he asks the heroes why they think they have any chance without the only man who could ever match him. And knowing how Horikoshi he likes to do his writing, he likes to kind of sprinkle things in a few chapters before he ends up doing anything with it. I think it's going to be very ironic if All For One is on this battlefield saying, hey, you guys need All Might to beat me, and then over in the other battlefield, we actually have All Might showing up to help Deku to beat Shigaraki. But check our recent videos out to see theories on how exactly I think that's going to happen. All For One says that they don't know what he's capable of at his peak performance, because everyone here was born during All Might's time of peace, so they couldn't possibly understand what people have gone through who've lived through the dark times where everyone actually feared him. That they couldn't understand what the real reason was why he ruled the world with such an iron fist. And that was his power. And the level of genuine fear that all for once struck in the hearts of many just because of how overwhelmingly powerful he was and how calculating and devious he could be. As All For One talks about his Kingdom of Darkness, we see a panel of Banjo, the one for all Black Whip Quirk user, standing in front of several fallen buildings. And on the same page, we get a shot of Jiro really quickly, who's been left on the ground by Tokoyami. And of course, we also see Ochako, who we did last see with Tokoyami in that group as well, showing that Tokoyami has actually left the group of 1A students and he might be doing something on his own. Now, as All For One is trying to give this speech, he actually gets caught up in a massive whirlwind of air as air currents start to wrap around him and try to send him flying. The wind goes towards All For One and Inasa says that he already knows all of that because they learn about it in modern history class, but he has decided to support Shoto and Endeavor so his boiling blood will not give in to fear. And as he says this, we see a wave, a horde of flying meatball fingers all going in to attack All For One at the same moment, probably trying so hard to turn him into a meatball and this is really just like dodge challenge mode because All For One has to dodge every single one of these attacks. But it's at this moment where All For One starts to get even seriouser, and we see that the wings on his back start to branch out even further, getting bigger as more energy starts to build in them, and All For One thinks, wow, that's a really impressive wind quirk you have there, young Shiketsu student. I wonder if I should just steal it. And it's at this point where All For One does another giant energy explosion with tendrils of electricity coursing through the attack, and he actually uses the wind in his favor to propel the attack and hit more of the heroes, but they all tell Inasa to continue. Even despite the fact that one of these bolts of electricity actually ends up hitting Inasa right in the head and almost blowing it off, although it only blows the cap off. Anasa leans his head forward, though still as resolved as ever, as we see Hawks flying really, really fastly towards All For One. Inasa says that it doesn't matter how strong the wind is in the villain's favor, because his quirk actually gets stronger on windy days. So instead of fearing the past, he wants to see the future. And this is where Hawk spots someone high up in the sky, and we don't actually see who it is in this moment, but we see a lot of different threads coming off of that person and connecting to everyone on the battlefield, coming from Hawks' vision, right? It's more of a symbolic thing, as Hawks remembered what he said to Endeavor at UA, and says that it's not only one for all that connects all these people's hearts, but it's also Endeavor who's bringing hope to the younger ones, including Anasa and himself. All for one looks absolutely disgusted, though, as he looks at Hawks and realizes that he also saw the same look in Pixie Bob's face, and he absolutely hates that look of light in the hero's eyes. But he says this hope of theirs really makes no difference. The remaining heroes are all weak and couldn't even get close to him. So it's about time for All For One to wrap this battle up. And as we see the wings on his back now expanding far more than ever into branches and branches of electrical power, with All For One seeming like he's about to absolutely destroy the battlefield, with a quirk that really looks like the quirk that he used to finish off Nanashimura, we get a full page 
stage where All For One is floating in the air, and behind him, we just see a massive wall of darkness and two giant weird looking eyes. And that's when for one of the very first times we've ever seen in the series, All For One reacts with fear. As he feels the lingering presence behind him, the massive shadow being cast over him of Tokoyami and Dark Shadow. That's right, it's finally time for the Bird Boys to be in full effect. All for One remembers the attack that destroyed his mask before, and he says this has the same feeling, that it's something that he absolutely has to dodge right now. And on the next page, we can see Tokoyami looking down, standing inside of the darkness of an angry face, looking really, really awesome. He looks like Sasuke here. And Tokoyami Tokoyami says that there are many different types of darkness, so All For One has to stop bragging as if he knows them all. Tokoyami says that the small shadow that All For One has produced has long since been illuminated by Class 1A, pretty much saying like, you're not really that big of a deal, dude. And as he says this, we see a panel of baby Tokoyami sleeping next to Dark Shadow and the panel of 1A and the students receiving their umbrellas. And on the next page, we see a massive, massive, giant Dark Shadow, and we actually get a good view of him as the forest actually starts to climb around him with Pixie Bob using her quirk to actually support Dark Shadow here. You see the rain clouds have really really darkened the environment and the flames from Dobby's quirk burning the forest are already dying out after burning all the trees. In addition again thanks to Pixie Bob creating an earth shelter for Tokoyami he's able to release Dark Shadow's full power. And as Hawks puts his hand on his student's back screaming, Go Tokoyami! He puts all of his energy in pushing Tokoyami forward as Tokoyami looks like he's about to do a United States of Smash inside of the darkness instead of all those interesting and crazy lights popping up. And Inasa on the side uses one final push of his air currents to knock all for one directly into the attack so he can't dodge it. As we see Dark Shadow's giant fist punching all for one who tries to catch the attack and can't actually do it as he's speared into the ground of the forest with Tokoyami landing the first major blow on the villain and the chapter ending. Now during the chapter, we actually learned that the reason that Tokoyami is such an effective counter for All For One is that All Might told them that All For One wouldn't be able to steal Endeavor's quirk just by touching his flame. So it's likely the same for Dark Shadow and Tokoyami. Meaning this is a situation where All For One really can't just ignore Tokoyami and it's gonna be really difficult for him to just run away if he doesn't create some massive sort of light here, but he's gonna have to understand Tokoyami's quirk and everything like that and try to come up with counters. And of course, at the very end of the chapter, Hawks told Tokoyami that he's happy that he helped him on his journey, even if just a little, because that makes him grateful that he was born with those dirty wings. And of course we see Tokoyami hitting off for one of that attack, which is called Black Ankh Balder. Now immediately I took to Twitter to talk about how All For One is usually paired with Greek symbolism for Greek mythology and how Tokoyami is usually paired with Egyptian but mainly Norse mythology symbolism. So here in a way it's kind of like the two mythologies from God of War fighting each other. And of course Horikoshi's author comment for this week's Shonen Jump is I used Zebra's mechanical pencil repair service and got back both the substitute pencil and a passionate letter. I don't really know what that's about but some of you more artistically minded folks can let me know in the comment section below. So those those are the spoilers for this week's chapter of My Hero Academia. Check back a little later tomorrow for another video on the chapter discussing a little more in depth of what happened. But if you're bored and you want something else to watch, please again go watch my My Hero Academia Iceberg Explained videos or any of the other recent uploads that we have on the channel.